that yeah. on the bottom so you can just stack up there. I'll do that. I'll circle in the fire. How is it? Hello, my friends. Today, I would like to share hot rock technology. To me, this is one of the most essential of bushcraft or wilderness or survival skills. If you watched my overnight, naked, almost naked winter thing, that's how I got through the night. And it's got me through a lot of other nights when I did not have enough, enough clothing or enough shelter or a good sleeping bag. This will get you through the night and keep you warm. But learning how to use these rocks is not quite as simple as it seems on the surface. I've been doing this for years. I'm pretty good at it by now. So I wanna share what I've learned so that you can have the skill for yourself. On the surface, it seems simple. Here's my fire. I'm gonna have rocks around the fire. They're gonna be heating up. Wow, I've got my hot rocks. But what we want when we have a hot rock that we're gonna put on our skin is we want a rock that is hot, warm, <laughs> I should say, all the way through. When it's like that, I'm gonna be able to put it on my skin. It's going to keep me warm for an extended amount of time. If you have a sleeping bag that is not warm enough for your conditions, you put one or two of those hot rocks in the sleeping bag with you, wow, you're gonna have a toasty, toasty night. If you don't have a sleeping bag or other means to keep yourself warm, these can be put directly onto your body, which I'll explain exactly how to do that. So to make this work, I have to learn to bake these rocks. Now, one quick safety point, you've probably heard that rocks can explode and there's some truth to that. I've never had one blow up. I have had them crack apart on me, but I've had people tell me that as conventional wisdom goes, especially rocks down by a river or waterway can have more um, moisture in them. You put them around the fire, that moisture expands and you can get an explosion. Now, remembering that we are not heating these rocks up that hot. So your likelihood of having an explosion like that is not really great. Well, probably the easiest way and the way I use most often is if you have a lot of rocks is just to set your rocks close to your fire. There's my fire that way and just set it on top of other rocks. You can rotisserie and it works pretty well. If you're low on rocks, you can use sticks. Here, I'm going to set the rock close to the fire. Again, my fire is right over here and I can set it close up to the flames with these sticks, keeping it, of course, off the snow. Here's another one. If your fire is burnt down to coals, you can set two sticks and you can set your rocks up above those coals so that they're going to get all that radiant heat. Now I like to do my hot rocks with, a, with bare hands instead of gloves or mittens. That way I can be pretty intimate with the rock. I can feel how it's warming. Now, you can see I've taken the larger, flatter side instead of trying to heat the edge. And I'm gonna take that flatter side and I'm gonna point that towards the fire. When I get it set up, I'm gonna be reaching in with my hand and feeling is it close enough that I'm getting some heat? Now, the exact heat that you want is a little bit hard to explain, but in general, I wanna be able to put my fingers between the rock and the fire, and within a few seconds, it should be too hot and I should have to pull my hand away. If it's too far out, those rocks are just not gonna heat up very quickly. If it's too close, then I'm gonna get the effect that happens when I just have rocks in a fire, which is that the surface is gonna get scalding hot. It's just gonna be burning my skin on contact while the inside is not gonna have much heat in it. That means that I'm gonna have a rock that's ah, too hot to touch or put on my skin and it's gonna run out of heat relatively quickly. 
We want the opposite. We want a rock that is heated all the way through, that has a really good warmth to it, and then I'm going to be able to put it on my body and it's going to have a long, long heat duration. Here I've got my rock set up, it's baking, and I'm going to let this side heat for quite a while. Then I'm going to flip it around. By quite a while, I don't mean until I can't touch it anymore. I want to be able to touch it. But I'm just going to keep rotisserieing it. <laughs> That's the word. I'm going to keep turning it around, allowing the other side, and if it's a rounder rock, you could imagine the other sides, heating up and just keep it moving. I'm not going to give a duration of a minute or two minutes before you turn it, but it's more a feeling of, of the sensation of heat that you're getting off of the rock. The reason I'm not giving exact times is that this all depends on a lot of factors. It depends on the heat being thrown off by your fire. It depends on the ambient temperature. It depends on so this is sitting on other rocks, which are cooling it off at that contact point through conduction. And it depends on the type of rock that you're using. So there's a lot of factors here, and that's why this is really more of an art than a science. We've got to learn to be able to feel these rocks and understand how the heat is moving through them. This only comes through experience. I'm sorry, everybody. This is one of those skills that we just, we need to get out and do it and practice it in real life conditions. We'll never get good at it. I'm gonna give you a few of the common mistakes that I see people make. Number one, they don't start making their hot rocks right away. I'm cold, I'll get a fire going, and the temptation is to just warm my hands over the fire. That feels so good. Sitting here with hot rocks doesn't feel like it's warming me up. So I end up putting off doing the hot rocks while I warm my hands. I'm actually getting colder and colder even though I maybe feel a little bit warmer from my hands. And then by the time I finally get to working with my hot rocks, I've lost so much core temperature that it's not gonna do me a lot of good. So if I'm too cold, I start a fire, I have rocks available, those hot rocks are my first, really the first thing that I'm paying attention to. Another common mistake is being impatient and just letting these be in too close. I get my rock too close into the fire and a couple things happen. First of all, ow, it gets too hot to touch. And now it's, it's not usable for me. Second of all, it starts to get charred. And that's just a cosmetic thing, but if I'm putting it on my body or on my clothes, I end up getting really black. There should not be any char on your rock. You should not have any black on your skin at all if you're doing this right. Another one is not turning the rock often enough. These are almost like little babies, little friends that you're gonna, you're just gonna keep moving them, paying attention to them. Now, when you're doing that, you're around the fire, so you're still absorbing lots of good heat radiantly, as you would if you were just sitting around the fire. So in a way, it doesn't cost you anything, energetically, to be giving this attention to the rocks. But, if I turn them and I turn them, then I really make sure that I'm heating them from all sides. Again, that long duration of heat is really nice. You're putting a lot of work into one of these rocks, and you want it to last. Another mistake I often see people make is just doing one rock like I'm doing here. It's pretty easy just to pay attention to one rock. But if I have two, three, four, five baking, then I can be cycling them. So I can have one, two, three on my body and have two others that are cooking. If you have companions with you, they probably don't know how to do this. You can bake rocks for them. It's really just as easy to take care of five as it is to take care of one. Really? Yeah, let's get some others. 
Are we rocks making? Yeah, let's get some others going. Oh. I need my cheese to come up, Dad. Whoa! There we go. <laughs> Perfect. What is it? String cheese. <laughs> Baked string cheese. How many other rocks are we making? Well, for this video, we're really just concentrating on this one. On this one? <laughs> on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if we're going to stay out longer, we definitely want a bunch of them going. What do you do with these rocks? Well, lots of good uses. If I am getting into a sleeping bag and it's not warm enough for the conditions, I can toss two or three rocks down in there. There's been times when I've spent the night right next to a fire, kind of baking rocks through the night and putting them down into my sleeping bag or blanket bag. When you do so, it's pretty toasty warm in there. Your core is a good place to put these. So it can go right into my belly. Especially if I have nice insulative clothes, this is gonna warm my whole core in a very nice way by creating a pocket of heat inside. This is the temptation. Oh, warm those hands, warm those hands. It's not really doing us a lot of good. Thinking of warming your core. It's another one of the basic truths about staying warm in these cold conditions. If I'm just thinking about warming my extremities, I'm gonna slowly get colder and colder and colder. But if I warm my core, my extremities will eventually get warm. So I'm concentrating on my core. Sometimes I put these, we're thinking of where our major blood flow is going. So sometimes I keep them up on my neck like this. That's a great place. You can position one on the back of your neck, especially if you have a scarf or a hood. And that can sit there and you can have your hands free. So that can work well. Down your pants, right? So right here along these major arteries that are running is another great place to put these rocks. Imagine if I have three, I might have one here, one here, one in my underneath my clothing in my core, and I've got some good stuff going. I can warm my hands over the fire as they're working the rocks so that I feel warmer, but I'm really regaining my heat by having these hot rocks at work on my core. Another place is up underneath your clothes in your armpits, one each this really warms things up and you can squeeze them in while you're still working on the fire, warming other rocks. Here's a quick tip. I was out with some of the forest monks and uh, Dustin the other night and Dustin's feet were getting cold around the fire, especially if we're squatting, which I really advocate. It does cut off some blood flow yeah, down. Yeah, uh, my feet are like yeah. my toes, my toes right now. Your toes, they'll start to get toes, cold. Toes, toes. So if you get something to sit on it's going to insulate you from the ground you can sit down so your butt is not on the ground really important or you're going to be losing major heat through conduction get those shoes off and you can warm your feet over the fire hold your shoes upside down warm them up and when everything's nice and toasty put those shoes or boots back on you're going to be have warm feet again. Remember though that they're warm and if the snow isn't packed down here it's packed down so it's not a concern but if you get snow onto those warm boots it's going to melt and they could get wet and that makes your situation worse. Remember the keys here. The rock has to be close into the fire but not sitting right inside of it. If it's getting black you're too close. Flames are getting onto it and you're just going to be heating the outside. Bake it slowly. All sides. Until it feels really, really nice and warm. Now there's this <laughs> a little secret to this too. And that's that if the rock is really, really warm, like I can only have my hands on it so long, 
then if I'm starting to spend a whole night warming myself, I'm actually gonna burn myself, a little bit like sunburn, over time from just slow heat application. So in a way you want these a little bit cooler than you think, but they should feel really toasty warm. The only way to get good at this is through experience. This really goes for all of our skills. We can get good at them in the garage or the backyard, but to take them outside somewhere to try to practice your fire making when it's raining or just crappy conditions, getting out, doing these rocks, whenever you're around a campfire, Dad, heat up it. a rock. Yeah, sure, you can do whatever you want with that. Because you cannot get good at hot rocks unless you've got lots of practice. If you get good at this, it makes you really valuable around camp because you can be baking rocks for people. When somebody's cold, you just grab a rock, toss it to them, it's perfectly warm. Feels pretty good when you have a hot rock, doesn't it, Mira? <laughs> <laughs> now there's one exception to the idea of just making your rock warm enough that you can put it onto your skin. And that is if you're wearing leather. You've already heard me extol the virtues of leather. There are so many deer hides that go to waste every year from hunters that don't use them to roadkill. If you learn to make buckskin, this stuff is incredible because you can take a really, really hot rock and for instance, between my thighs here, I can set that down and that heat, this has a lot of heat resistance. It's also, it, it kind of uh, collects heat. So even after I remove this, I'm gonna have heat lingering in that leather that's really gonna warm me. Finally, if you wanna try some real hot rock luxury, you get a bunch of rocks going, some bigger ones. And here's what you do. You engineer it so that you get one big one. I don't know if I have any rocks that are big enough here. I'd have to unearth this one down here. That is going to be your sitting rock. He needs like two of these. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd put it on something that's gonna be insulated from the ground so it doesn't melt down through the snow. You sit on that. Oh my. You get another nice big one or two that are sitting there for your bare feet to go on while you warm your sh shoes around the fire or your boots. You get one in your core, one in the back of your neck if you're gonna be working the fire or just one on each side. Get some down here. You will be so, so toasty warm. It's really, really uh, luxurious. <laughs> Too bad you can't just do it in your house. I mean. <laughs> Be pretty nice. Well, this is, this was used in bed warmers. We were at a, a thrift store the other day. Yeah, it was so really cool. There was that old fashioned <sighs> copper bed warmer that you. People usually put coals in it, but right. not hot rocks. <laughs> so the equivalent of today's electric blankets. And so this is old technology. It works so, so well. Give it a try. I'm not even getting into some of the other ways that you can use the hot rocks. You've probably heard of hot rock cooking. A real simple one is if you have some gloves or boots that have gotten wet and are cold, then your hot rock can go into that piece of clothing and it's gonna heat it up and dry it at the same time. Let me know what you think of it. If you have any questions about hot rocks, ask me and tell me in the comments if you go out and try it or if you've tried it before, what's worked for you. Thank you my friends for watching and we'll talk with you soon.